The setup button on the front panel is only to turn the display on and off. Pressing and holding that a bit longer turns the display back on. Pressing and holding it for a shorter time turns it off. To set a timer for the display, we go into the setup mode, function key, and in this case we click on mode remote. Uh, we're not going to set up mode remote or transmit inhibit, both of those. This one is used for controller operation. The transmit inhibit allows you to enter a code that temporarily turns off the repeater transmit. In this case we're going to turn on the display timer and we're going to give it, we'll do 30 minutes. Uh, so that if we walk away from the unit for that long a time, the display will turn itself off. Deviation setup is for the transmit signal of the C4FM, the fusion uh, information only, as to whether you're working to the full width of the C4FM or cutting that further in half with narrow. We'll set the downlink frequency first, which is the um, which is the output frequency of the repeater by pressing, lightly touching the screen where it says downlink and then typing in our 146.790. So 146.790 and that automatically enters it once it's filled out to those six digits. Now we'll change the uplink frequency and that is the um, that is the receive side of the repeater or the transmit side with the offset applied that's one four six one nine zero and now that's in there um, the squelch button on the front is only adjusting the receive squelch on the repeater itself. Um, previously we set it to about midpoint uh, to start just to be again covering any background noise things along those lines uh, and everyone seems to be able to get in without a problem so we'll leave it at that. Touching squelch brings us back. So the function key brings us to all of the other adjustments that are available on the repeater. So for example, ID set is where we're going to put in the call sign. So in this case, uh, we'll go with W6 J W and enter. So we have our ID set. Um, we can change our tone squelch here and we're going to turn on both transmit and receive to tone only. Back here. Uh, if I believe signaling is where we set that frequency and it should be 123 PL and that's set here. We don't use DCS, we're just using Tone Squelch. And now finally we'll set the ID announcement uh, every 10 minutes we'll leave it at CW with a mid-level and I think we left the other one at 20 words per minute. We can double check that. One other setting that we can do is the timer. Uh, we'll give a uh, timeout time 
of 10 minutes. And we will leave the squelch hysteresis at normal. And I believe, I believe we set the squelch tail. That's at 500 milliseconds. And I believe that is the setup necessary to have it ready to go. From here, it would need to be hooked up and tested. With regard to the front setup screen, as we've mentioned, uh, auto on uh, both receive and transmit will select digital or analog based on the input signal and then pass that through automatically. So an analog signal coming into the receiver will be passed through as an analog signal. A digital signal coming into the repeater will be passed through as a digital signal. The two cannot intermix and uh, analog signals, uh, I believe, tend to take over the repeater. When you set your output to fix FM, then the analog signals or digital signals received by the repeater get uh, transferred over to analog signals only on the output which allows all radios, uh, both analog and digital, to hear the output of the repeater, no matter who is uh, sending into the repeater. That's typically how they're set up in situations where you want as many users as possible to hear the output signal, but, at least, but allow uh, a variety of different radios, both the C4FM fusion radios as well as analog radios to input into the repeater. If we set the input to FM fixed and output to FM fixed, then only analog radios will be able to access the repeater uh, and analog radios will be able to hear the output of the repeater.